Hello everyone, welcome to my mock GDC talk, GDC 2021 Reflection, my top takeaways as a job seeker. So, my name is Garrett Williams, uh, I'm a senior computer engineering student at Rowan University. I currently work at our school's uh, VR lab, uh, research lab, um, as a student worker. I've been there for three summers now. And I'm interested upon graduation in tech art uh, for games, whether that's undergrad or graduate. We'll, we'll see how everything plays out. So my goals of this talk, um, one is to share and document my GDC 2021 experience. Uh, it was online this year, but it was kind of nice for me because I probably wouldn't have been able to attend if it was in person. Um, so it's nice to get even some GDC experience um, as early on as I can, uh, which is great. Um, I also really want to solidify the advice that I was given in these talks. You know, I feel like before, um, or a lot of times, I have to hear stuff multiple times before I actually understand the stuff and actually use the advice. Um, so it's good after not only watching the talks, but writing an article and now doing this presentation, hopefully that this advice will really sit with me and I'll actually act on it. Uh, and finally, I want to guide others uh, to other good GDC talks. Um, if they're in a similar position to me, um, I'm gonna give some of the information that was included in these talks, and hopefully if it sounds interesting to you, uh, then you can go back and watch them uh, yourself. I do have links for all the talks and you know, where you can actually view them. Most of them you can for free in the GDC vault, which is awesome. Um, so if, you're, if you like some of the information that I've, I've given here, um, you can go back and watch these talks and actually hear it from the people uh, who gave it. Um, also, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty cool idea to, I, th I just like the idea of like giving a mock GDC talk because it'd be cool to actually do a real one one day. So the first talk uh, I'm going to talk about uh, is the impossible quest, getting a job in games. Uh, now I'll show in a bit for each slide I have at the top what the advice actually was. And in parentheses, I have the speaker. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce names because I'm probably going to butcher them. Um, but if you go to the actual talk page, uh, there's links to each speaker and I have their names spelled correctly, hopefully. Um, so you can go check them out if you want uh, more information about them. So the first piece of advice is be prepared to move locations, especially early on in your career. Now, if you live in like like rural California or Texas or you know Seoul or um, Brighton, like places that are hubs for games, then this might not apply to you, although depending on your opportunities, it might. Uh, personally, my area is pretty limited. If I want you know, a, a job in games that's at one of these bigger companies, um, I'm either ha gonna have to drive pretty far, uh, which I'd rather not do, um, or to have to move. Um, now, because of the pandemic, um, there have been more remote options available, um, and some can be fully remote, which I'm interested in. Um, However, I do like the in-person camaraderie of, you know, being in an office and being around people, especially if it's my first taste into the industry. Um, kind of want to actually meet these people um, in person. There's kind of a different dynamic that I really enjoy about being in person. Um, and granted, you know, do whatever it's safest for everyone. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at it in the future and be like, okay, I may need to move, you know, across the country or who knows across the world um, to get these opportunities. And I'm, and I'm becoming more prepared to, to do that. Community events are a great way to meet others, especially if you volunteer. Now, community events can take many different forms, one being in person and also being online. Um, there's been a lot more of that recently, um, again, because we know why. Um, but in-person opportunities are still there as well. I've been to, uh, to one in-person meetup group and that was a great experience. Um, I really enjoyed it, met some cool people. Um, and although I was pretty pretty shy, uh, it was it was nice to get that experience. Um, however, there's also, um, which may be a little bit more uh, easier to to try, is like Discord and, and YouTube communities. Um, now, personally, I'm part of several different Discords. Um, I have my own as well uh, because I post uh, YouTube videos and I've gained a little bit of a following. And uh, it's nice to interact with other you know game dev YouTubers and and indie devs and and you know, these big time game devs uh, even. Uh, just to you know, sort of build that uh, that relationship and you know meet other people. Um, and I also talk about volunteering is like if you just do this stuff, um, I mean, like volunteer wise. Um, not only is it good to like meet more people, you know, behind the scenes and and really 
uh, get yourself immersed into um, you know the, the the meetup itself and the industry. Uh, but also, uh, your bank account's gonna be happy because uh, a lot of the times um, there's different opportunities where if you volunteer, you may get free tickets, um, sometimes free merch, free lunch, uh, which which sounds really nice to me. Showcase your best finished team-based products. And this comes um, along the lines of portfolios. Um, so uh, personally, I've been doing game dev. I released my first game, I believe it was 2015. Um, and you know, I was proud of it then. I'm still proud of it now, but it's not the most presentable thing. Um, and so I don't want to have that in my portfolio because I want to show what I've learned and, and the new stuff I can um, provide for these companies. Um, it's also good to show um, like when you talk about incomplete versus complete, complete seems like the better route uh, because it not only shows that um, you have the commitment to actually push through and complete products, but it shows that you've been through the entire game dev process. You know, if you have an idea of how you know marketing and release to these platforms goes and distribution, then you know you're a little bit more valuable. Um, you know, knowing how all this stuff connects and not just how to start making a game, but how to finish one. Um, and also, if you show team-based products, it shows that you know people skills. Um, now, this is, you know, for me, like I've done a lot of personal indie game stuff, and I've worked primarily alone. Um, but through my work at school, I have worked on a team, um, which has been a great experience, and I have a lot to share about that. And you know, no, pretty much no matter where you go in the industry, you're gonna be working with someone at some point. Um, so having people skills um, is is very crucial, and showing that you've worked on a team um, is very, very valuable. And I feel like a couple other pieces of advice go back to people's skills as well. So I'll talk about that a bit. Read the entire job posting and do as they ask. So if I had to sum this up, I would say tailor, uh, not the actual tailor person, but tailor your portfolio, tailor your resume, tailor your cover letter. Um, because, you know, these, depending on the company, like, they're getting potentially hundreds of job applications a, a week, maybe a day. Um, and you know, they got to pick you know, the best people. And if you present them a portfolio or resume that you know, isn't specific to them, that doesn't show them that you know, you're the perfect fit, then they're probably not going to pick you. And I think rightfully so. Um, also, if, you know, if they ask for a cover letter and you can't spend the hour or even less to, to write a cover letter, then if you don't have the dedication to them, you know, why would they feel like, um, you know, you, you would be dedicated to, to the company. Um, and I know it can get kind of tedious sometimes, but that's just kind of how things have to work. Um, it also just makes it easier for recruiters. If you know, you can let the recruiter know very quickly and easily that you're either the right pick or potentially the wrong pick, you know, it just makes their jobs a lot easier. And maybe, if, maybe they see that, okay, they have some good stuff, but maybe they'd be better for a different position or maybe um, for next summer, who knows? Don't be afraid to be bold and show yourself to the world. Um, so uh, within game dev, um, there's a lot of different people and within any industry. Um, and there's a lot of cool people, right? Like I've met some cool people either through Discord or in person. Um, and the only way that's possible is that you gotta, you know, show yourself off. Like you gotta be bold, be cool. Um, you know, like through doing YouTube, you know, and this is a <laughs> picture from one of my videos. Um, you know, I'm sure I've turned people away and kind of, um, you know, like been kind of weird to some people. Um, but to others, you know, they seem to like that, and it's kind of a way to uh, to show yourself off and to really express yourself. Um, and I, and I do like that, and that's helped me uh, open up doors, meet different people. Um, and I'm very thankful that I've, you know, I could definitely be more bold, um, but I, I have been in the past and it has benefited me. Um, you know, there's always gonna be people who don't like it, but the people do, you know, it's, I think it's very worth it. Stay organized with your job applications. Um, now I've applied in the past, you know, to a couple random different jobs, uh, but this upcoming year for the next summer, I'm really trying to get um, an internship in the industry. So I'm definitely going to be uh, taking this advice uh, to heart. Uh, keep in track, whether it's um, an Excel spreadsheet um, or just like writing down notes um, for each position. Um, Jonas actually gave a great um, 
great reference for a spreadsheet of how he would keep track of job applications. Um, it just makes it easier to follow up. You know, if certain recruiters, you know, maybe they forget to to reach back out or um, respond, and maybe like you want feedback, um, you want to know exactly who you talk to. You know, this makes it a lot easier, a lot more organized. It definitely also keeps helps keep track of deadlines. You know, depending on the company, you know, sometimes their applications are due, you know, end of October, end of November, sometimes you know, January, February, whenever. Um, so keeping track of it makes it a lot easier um, to manage your time and you know really make sure you get the applications done that you need to um, as opposed to doing some way far in advance and missing um, ones that are done earlier. And I also think uh, Sankey diagrams like the one I have shown are really cool to look at. Um, so keeping a track would allow me to you know potentially make one. All right, so the next talk is the resilient job hunt addressing the well of doubts. Don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to yourself yesterday. Uh, so now with the world of social media, um, social media can have very great attributes about it. Um, but the negatives can be that it's sometimes you develop imposter syndrome. Um, you look at other people and be like, oh, I'm not good enough. Um, you know, it can be very demotivating. Um, however, it can also be very uh, inspiring. Um, I try not to get so far into social media um, where I'm feeling like down about myself. And I try to realize that, you know, we're all in different positions um, and, you know, where we may be not as good as in some areas, we may be better in other areas. And we all have our own journey um, and we should really um, recognize that and not directly compare ourselves. Um, it is good to, to keep in check, you know, if I know what other people are doing, if I'm not doing or maybe I'm doing something a different way and maybe there's a better way of doing it than other people are doing it. Um, if I'm doing something similar to someone else and they're having better success, maybe I can look at them and see, okay, what can I learn from them? Um, but really at the end of the day, it's about comparing your past self to your present self. You know, um, Sure, I'm not the greatest game dev um, and I'm not the greatest at using all these different softwares, but I am better than I am I, than I was, you know, five years ago, even a year ago. Um, and it's nice to, to look back and, and see the improvement. Um, and I think that's also equally, if not more motivating than looking at that others who have quote unquote made it. Opportunities can come out of the blue, so be open and ready. Uh, yeah, so uh, opportunities can seemingly come from nowhere. Honestly, where I'm working now um, through my school, I'm pretty sure I just found it through a random search on my school's website and it's turned into probably the best opportunity um, I could have at this time. Um, so things are just going to come up and, you know, you can't prepare for the opportunity itself, but you can be prepared for opportunities as they come. Um, whether that's, you know, having other aspects of your life in order, whether it's like you're prepared to, to move if you're, um, if you really want to do something like this, um, or you have, you know, your resume portfolio ready, um, whatever it is, you know, it's good to be prepared because, you know, you kind of have to expect the unexpected. Um, things are just going to happen. Um, and it's also good to, to be willing to at least look at these opportunities. You know, you don't necessarily have to take them, you know, right? Like stuff will come up, people will email you or give you a, a connection on LinkedIn. Um, and you don't necessarily have to take the opportunities, but I, I think it's good to at least be open to, to not... Um, I guess be content, um, or at least that this is a personal thing. Like for me personally, um, I like to look at these upper other opportunities because I want to keep growing and improving. Um, and who knows what these opportunities may do? Um, you know, I really like where I'm working now, um, but you know, there's also other stuff available. Um, so I think it's good to at least you know be be willing to um, to look into these opportunities. You don't have to take them, but just be open to them. And this kind of goes along with this tip is have a growth mindset. So this can mean many different things. Um, one way uh, I think uh, a more tangible example is to not get attached to uh, ways of doing stuff. Uh, for example, with software, like the first time I did like texturing of a 3D model, uh, it was I unwrapped UV unwrapped it, exported out the map, went to Photoshop, and then like hand painted uh, the textures on it. 
it didn't turn out great. Um, and I'm so glad that substance painter exists. Um, but like, if I didn't have that growth mindset and got, you know, like just did the everything the way I originally did it, then I'd still be using Photoshop and I'd probably st still be be texturing stuff at this point because it takes uh, way longer in Photoshop, at least for me. Um, than substance painter, substance painter is great. Um, so you know, like, be willing to to adapt to the industry and how it changes. You know, it things change so much. Like, the, I I've I haven't. Um, been like directly in the industry but i have you know when it's making my own games you know looking at like uni updates like i started using uni like uni 4.5 4.6 um and to see how far that's come from then to like uni 2021 like it's it's crazy how stuff can change and um if you you know get stuck to the old ways then you know you're gonna probably get left behind and i think it's just better to you know go with the flow rather than fight against it and stick with your old ways you know it's you know, depending on the person, it might you know, like kind of stink to um to have to constantly learn stuff, but that's just kind of the state in the industry. And honestly, I enjoy that. Like, I enjoy learning new stuff and and seeing stuff change because it just shows growth. And I, I, I've some stuff may not be directly applicable to um like future updates, but learning how to um like how to learn essentially and how to uh, figure out these softwares will definitely help in the future whenever these softwares change or, or new ones come up. Networking in person or online is huge. So one thing I've learned um, is that this industry is pretty small. Um, I haven't been directly in it, but as far as I'm concerned, the industry is pretty small, judging by the people giving these talks, how they know each other. Um, and they're working at different companies, different positions, how like everyone seems to kind of know each other. Um, so especially in the salt industry, you know, getting to know people is, is huge. Um, especially if you know one person, they probably know someone else and someone else who maybe you want to connect with um, and who, maybe who you want to be friends with. You know, there's, like I said, there's a bunch of cool people um, and, you know, getting to know them is, is kind of awesome. It is awesome. Um, and like, like I said before, like at the end of the day, you're going to work in a team. If you're trying to work in these companies like Unity or you know, Respawn or um, ILM Lab, like you're going to work in a team. You know, unless you're working on a super small product and this like, super small like secluded area, like you're, you're going to be working on a team at some point. Um, so getting to know people um, is crucial. And this could be either through LinkedIn, it could be Discord. Um, it could be different social medias. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can meet people in, in person. Um, you know, so it's good to uh, to really commit to that, um, you know, to, to not just, like, brush it off, um, to really uh, get to know people. And, you know, I guess some people, like, don't necessarily like the term networking. Um, yeah, it's, like, kind of, especially, like, if you're in a position like me where I'm not so established, you know, you kind of have to network and be like, hey, like, can I get some advice? Or, like, you know, would you be willing to get some advice? And then, you know, build off of that. Um, it also just comes down to, uh, to to doing interesting stuff. You know, if you like, do cool stuff like, you know, posting on YouTube or posting on social media, then people will naturally come um, to you. And then it's more of that sort of organic relationship. Do you research on the companies you apply for? So this one is two-sided um one is that like i was talking about before um is that you know if you do research into the company it shows you care if you know um the games they made in the past if you don't know, know um you know what they're about their goals then it shows you it shows the company that you care um and that's you know really important if you want to be a good employee for the company and if they um if you want them to hire you um however on the flip side it also um makes sure that you find the red flags um, now, unfortunately, and this is like any, any industry, um, there are um, those select few people um, or companies that um, kind of spoil the bunch. Um, it sucks that it's the way it is, but that just happens. Um, and you know, if you're able to research these companies and you know find these potential red flags or um, like problems that may exist within these companies, either it you're prepared for it when you go to it, um, or you can end up avoiding it. Um, and you know, you don't want to be in the positions where, um, you know, bad things can happen. Um, so it's good to, to learn from others, you know, maybe your dream company isn't 
what you thought it was and maybe a company you didn't necessarily like at the start turns into your dream company. Um, so it's good to, to learn from others, do your research, um, and make sure that wherever you're going is the place you really want to go. I also want to shout out um, the moderator, um, Irina Asano. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to just put your name. Uh, but she did a great job um, summarizing what everyone said, just keeping everything on track um, to give all this great information. Next, we have game career seminar. You want to do what? Non-traditional pathways to game development. Reframe unrelated experience to fit the job you are applying for. Um, so these are three different jobs I've had. Uh, one is a VR student researcher. This is pretty applicable to the games industry. I use very similar softwares um, and development processes. So this is pretty pretty easy to put in my resume portfolio. Uh, but I do have some also unrelated experience. Like for example, I was a, a parkour coach for a little bit of time. And I was also a pizza line cook. Um, now on the surface, these aren't exactly related to games. Uh, but you can, you know, reframe different aspects about them to be related. So, for example, being a parkour coach, um, I had to learn different skills on the job. You know, I didn't know how to backflip before, actually. Um, and I learned on the job how to backflip and how to teach it. Um, I, I can't do it anymore, but, you know, I, I, could, I could at the time. Um, and for being a pizza line cook, you know, probably people making games aren't going to care that I know, you know, what order the toppings go, except if I'm <laughs> playing Overcooked. Um but they will care that I know how to work on a team, work in um, these like higher um, stress environments, I guess. Um, and really shows that I know how to, to work with others. You know, that can be a way of reframing it. Um, so I think it's good to, to look back on like my past stuff and, and not just completely brush it off as being non-game related. If especially if I want a fuller uh, resume, then showing this stuff um, you know, can, can show these different attributes that I could apply to the games industry. Have thick skin, but more importantly, know the boundaries. Uh, again, another two-sided uh, advice. Um, one is that you want to have thick skin when it comes to taking criticism, getting feedback, um, getting rejected from jobs, um, because you know it's bound to happen, and that's how we grow. You know, if no one tells us, you know, um, what we do wrong and what can be improved, then we're not going to grow as fast, let alone at all. Um, and it can be tough, and you know, there's people that are better at giving criticism than others. Um, but you know you have to understand that if they're coming from a good place and if they actually have good advice, then you should really take it and not just brush it off as like you know they're being mean. Um, to really just have that have the ability to be able to uh, to take that advice. Um, however, you also want to set limits. You know, there's there's ways of going about you know getting advice or or working at these different companies how you're treated. Um, that you know you need to really try to set these boundaries. And I know it's easier said than done. And I'm um, thankful that I've never been in a position where I've had to like really put up um, these boundaries and, and um, potentially, you know, risk losing my job. You know, I understand it's a thing. Um, but, you know, there's some things that, you know, are abuse that we shouldn't, you know, stand for. Um, again, easier said than done. Um, but like, know what's too far. That's, that's all I gotta say. Like, you know, we're all human and, you know, we all, um, have emotions and you know our own lives of uh, the stuff going on so it's it's good to to know you know what's what's okay and what's what's not again easier said than done take small actions today and every day uh, making games is hard <laughs> and uh, I, I've only made pretty small games um, aside for the um, one for uh, VR Center or several for what I do at work um, but it's it's hard. It's hard. Um, you know, no matter if you're working alone or a team, you know, or if it's big or small, it's it's a hard thing to do. And you know, doing you know everything um, can be daunting. You know, um, if you're an indie, for example, you're trying to do all aspects pretty hard, <laughs> like to learn everything and do it well. Um, even on a on a large team, you know, doing a specific aspect, you know, doing that specific thing really well, it's hard. Um, and you know this all could also apply to applying for jobs or um, building up your portfolio. Um, you know, with other stuff going on, whether it's school or work, you know, it could be hard to to take on this huge task of, like getting in the games industry or making a game. Um, so uh, Marino's saying like even 
like, and I, how I see it is like, even just doing like 15 minutes a day, even just a little bit a day, um, it's, it's something, you know, it's a lot less daunting than saying, oh, you got to finish, you know, your portfolio in a month, as opposed to saying, okay, you just got to work 15 minutes a day on the portfolio. And at the end of the day or end of the month, you know, you'll have however much time this is, um, of work you just built up over several days. So it's a lot better than, than getting overwhelmed by it and having nothing at the end. Hard skills are important, but soft skills are important her. So for if I was getting a programming job, for example, um, I need to know how to program. I need to know C Sharp or C++, whatever the language is. And that's you know, important. That's important to get a job. However, you must, must be a good teammate and a human. Again, like I talked about, you're going to be working on a team at some point, especially if you're working at these bigger companies. Um, and, you know, if people don't like working with you, they're not going to necessarily care that you're the best programmer. If it's a struggle to work with you and and um, they don't enjoy working with you, then you're just going to produce a lot of friction that, you know, honestly, most people would probably like working with someone who maybe doesn't know how to program as well, but they're great to work with. Um, I, can, I can say this from experience working um, on school products, you know, I'm sure everyone's had those experiences where you've had these great teams you worked on and the products was, turned out really well, but also these not so great teams um, that uh, it ended up not working out so well. Um, and so at the end of the day, just, just be nice, you know, be a, be a good teammate, be a good human, um, because that's how, you know, people want to work with you. Next, we have getting the most out of an entry level game job. So this is uh, Hannah was the the single speaker on this. Um, it's great talk. I really enjoyed it. Even though it's I'm not <laughs> in the entry level job yet, it's it's great to uh, to get this advice to uh, to get attention from anyone at the start and everyone when you are in. Um, so you, you want to get noticed. You know, it's whether it's applying for jobs or being in a job. You know, you want to get noticed if if you want to sort of move forward. Um, d- depending on the position, you may not necessarily want to get noticed. You know. Fair enough. Um, but say if you want a promotion, um, you know, you want to make sure your boss sees you. Um, if you want a job, you want to make sure these recruiters see you. Um, you don't want to get seen when you're playing hide and seek, but you know, the, the point still stands with well, with getting a job in games. Um, and also allows you to uh, to build you know relationships with your coworkers, build friendships. Um, again, going back to networking, you know, if you kind of don't expose yourself. Um, then, you know, you're never, or rather, you're probably not going to get these opportunities, uh, whether that's getting promotion or making a new friend. Uh, now we have Game Career Seminar Live, Killer Portfolio or Portfolio Killer. Part one, advice from industry artists. And there's there's a lot of, um, I think they do these like every year. Um, and it's them great. I've watched a couple, and these are definitely great ones to watch, especially if you're trying to get in games and make a, a good portfolio. If it moves, show it moving. If it doesn't move, show it still. Um, this is kind of a simple um, piece of advice, but very uh, important. And it goes into presentation, um, which I have another tip that's presentation. Um, so I like stuff moving. Um, I think it just looks cool to have stuff on a turntable or flying through a scene. Um, but you know, depending on what you're showing off, you know, if it just everything's still and the only thing that's moving is the camera, then what's really the point of flying through or having something move it can be distracting how you present it you know if you have um say this this rock for example this great looking you know rock that you can see the textures and and everything still um it has great lighting um but if you have it like flying through a scene of like a bunch of them you can't exactly see all the detail um you know pictures are great when you can and you know, everything doesn't necessarily have to be moving and i need to learn from this because i like to have moving stuff but it's not necessarily the great in terms of of showing off a specific attribute you know, if you have great textures like this having something still and being able to zoom in and, and see exactly how the textures look um, will definitely serve you more than having something moving and making it harder to um, those viewing a portfolio to to see you know what's great about it you are only as strong as your weakest piece uh, so again <laughs> it's kind of similar um, New stuff is better than old stuff. Um, I've sort of had sometimes this mindset, and still kind of do, of ha- showing old stuff shows experience. 
And like, again, I talked about, I made my first game in 2015. Um, and I'm, again, I'm proud of it, but it doesn't look that great. <laughs> um, it shows, you know, I've been doing it for a while, but it doesn't look that great. And I've definitely improved from it. And that's not representative of what I can produce now. Um, so having new stuff is, is great. You know, if I have a bunch of great, like three great looking pieces and then one terrible looking one, that's the one that's going to stick with the people. And that's not good because they want to see that I can do great stuff. Um, not that I produce sometimes not great stuff. Um, and what, it happens, but you don't have to put everything in a portfolio. Um, it's good to constantly update it and curate it uh, because, you know, you, we improve as, as artists, as, as programmers, as you know, game developers. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, this has happened to me plenty of times where my next game isn't necessarily better than my past one. I've maybe learned a lot from it, but it's not necessarily um, more presentable. Um, so it's good to, to curate stuff and, and really include your best stuff. Um, and it just shows growth. You know, if you show um, maybe your portfolio from a year ago, the recruiter first sees, and then they see it now, and they're like, oh, you've improved so much. I can you know, work with this. <laughs> um, and to put it in a weird way, like not. Okay, next one. Uh, don't spread yourself too thin trying to learn everything. Um, so there's this quote, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. Um, and uh, this is actually part of the quote. Um, the full quote, um, as Adam Savage puts, I believe, is Jack of all trades, master of none, um, though most of the time better than master of one or something like that. But basically, um, how I sum it up is that knowing everything, especially if you're working at a bigger company, um, on, like knowing everything on a basic level isn't necessarily desirable. These generalists, um, most of the time, um, you know, being a generalist in all these different areas isn't the best when it comes to producing these bigger projects because they're going to want you to do a specific thing very, very well. And if you're a generalist, then you know you can't necessarily do that. Um, however, if if I just knew how to, um, you know, to rig. Um, four-legged animals for example you know that's great when it comes to doing that but if i need to rig a human if i need to rig a six-legged animal um you know not being able to to do that um and not being able to adapt to that you know also equally isn't valuable and shows you're not um as valuable as you could as someone who who knows how to do more um so how it seems like the way to go about it, as he gave an example, is to be a generalist with a focus. So for example, um, maybe my focus is character art. I really want to get really good at character art, maybe even more specific, like humanoid character art. Um, and it's good to be really good at that, but also to be a little bit more general and have an understanding of rigging, have an understanding of concept art, because you know, when it comes down to it, you know, knowing those will help your character art. Um, so it's good to find that balance of between, you know, not trying to know so much, but not being so narrow, like having this sort of range of, of knowing, being really good at maybe one or two specific things, but still having an idea of how these other aspects apply to it. Presentation is key. Uh, so this is guacamole. Um, I'd imagine most people had guacamole. I've only had it recently uh, because uh, it kind of looks nasty. Uh, it tastes amazing, but it looks kind of nasty. Uh, so presentation is key uh, whenever you want people to look at yourself. Um, so this includes many different aspects, not just the asset itself you're showing off or the mechanic, but the lighting, the typography, the composition, um, you know, the camera angle, the you know, the colors, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, you got to make sure that stuff is all top notch because you know I've learned myself like lighting, for example, is huge. You know, if you have bad lighting, then it just makes the asset look bad um you know if, say if you're lighting a, a person if you want to show off your character model if you have that like butterfly looking lighting then it's just gonna look bad um and again like one bad apple spoils a bunch you know if you have this one aspect that doesn't look great then the whole thing's not gonna look great uh, so it's, it's good to be aware of all these different aspects and not just focus on making the asset look really good but making the presentation of it look good as well And finally, we have Game Career Seminar, growing your code library with each new project. Don't reinvent the wheel, reuse assets when possible. 
So this can apply uh, to making games directly, but also, you know, portfolios as well. Um, when it comes to making games, you know, there's definitely a lot of different aspects that are different. You know, if I'm making a 2D platformer versus, you know, a 3D MMO, they're pretty different. Uh, but there is some aspects that are the same. Maybe it's like a menu system. Um, maybe it is, um, maybe a little bit of movement. Or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a, a, a language system, um, a localization system. Um, you know, being able to to take these past stuff that you do and and implement it into um, your your future products will save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, and especially when it comes to you know a, working on a job. If you know you make this one you know, character, for example, um, a year ago, and and like your boss is like, okay, this doesn't really fit here, but maybe on a future product, and they're like, hey, can you get that character back? You know. It'd be great if you have all your fi files organized so that you can just be like, okay, here's a file, open it up, there you go. As opposed to having to remake it um, or potentially just lose out on it. Um, so being really organized when it comes to working on the job or whether it's making indie games um, is great and saving time um, on the stuff that maybe you already know how to do and maybe it's more tedious than it is worth it um, in terms of learning experience. So you can go on to do these bigger challenges that you haven't experienced before. So uh, that is my information. If you want to reach out to me um, I'm on YouTube, I'm on LinkedIn, um, it was probably the best way to reach me. Um, and so, you know, feel free to, to leave a comment. Um, I know I can't exactly do a Q&A, uh, but if you have any questions for what I said, um, or rather what I regurgitated of what everyone else said, um, I'm happy to answer them in the comments of this video. Um, or if you're um, uh, reading the article, um, that I wrote, which will be on LinkedIn, um, then feel free to leave a comment there as well. Uh, so thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for listening to me. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you in next year's GDC Talk, then, if I may, I may do. Because this is, this is fun. I, I really enjoyed doing this. So, uh, so I'll see you, see you all later. Take care.